Having seen how the New Testament applies the story of Adam and Eve in the garden to the inauguration and continuation of the kingdom, we should turn our attention to the final stage, the consummation of salvation in Christ at His second coming. This theme also appears many places in the New Testament, but we will touch on only two passages, one in Romans and another in the book of Revelation. In the first place, listen to the way Paul gave hope to the believers in Rome as he closed his epistle to them. In Romans chapter 16, verse 20, he wrote these words, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. In these words, Paul reminded the Roman Christians of their great hope in the second coming of Christ. But he did so by referring back to the promise of salvation in Genesis chapter 3. As we've seen earlier in this lesson, in Genesis 3.15, God told the serpent that one day Eve's seed, the human race, would crush the head of the seed of the serpent. In this passage, Paul said that Satan would be crushed under the feet of Christians at Christ's return. Christ himself will destroy Satan and our powerful enemy, death. Then we will reign with Christ in victory and glory. Another place in the New Testament where the themes of Genesis 2 and 3 are related to the consummation of the kingdom is the book of Revelation. John referred to the tree of life on a number of occasions in this book. Listen to the way John put the matter in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. The allusion to Genesis 3 here is obvious. We know that Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden precisely to keep them from eating of the tree of life. Yet when Christ returns, God will give his people the right to eat from the tree of life. Notice also where this tree is located. John explicitly said that it is in the paradise of God. Just as Moses called Israel to enter Canaan because long life could be found there, Christians have as their hope entering an even greater, more fully restored paradise. In the third place, we see another connection with Genesis in the identification of those who will eat from the tree. John said that the right will be given to him who overcomes. Just as Moses spoke of the tree of life to encourage Israel to be faithful to God, John explained that only the one who overcomes sin by remaining loyal will be able to eat from the tree of life. Finally, we should look at Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. As John looked ahead to the new world, this is what he saw. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. The perspective of the New Testament is plain. When Christ returns to consummate his kingdom, those who trust Christ will enter the paradise of Eden. Satan will be crushed under our feet and we will eat from the tree of life and live forever in God's new creation. We've seen in this lesson that Moses wrote about Adam and Eve in the garden to help the Israelites as they moved toward the promised land. He called the nation to retrace and to reverse the events in the Garden of Eden. In many respects, the message of this passage is very similar for us today. By hearing Moses call to Israel to move forward toward the promised land, we can see how we too must retrace and reverse the steps of Adam and Eve. By trusting and remaining faithful to Christ, we will discover the salvation of paradise lost and found.